Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today. And today, we got some pretty big news coming out of World Warships. They're making a change to the Commander Skills system again. Now the last time we had um, Commander Skills sort of rework was a long time ago. I think it was like patch 0.6.0 or something like that. So they're going around and changing some stuff. Now obviously before I get started, um, just to update everybody because I haven't made a video for a while. I did move, I found a new place, so all is good. You'll probably notice the audio and acoustics have changed as well. So let me know how that all sounds to you. All right, so let's take a look at this. This is actually quite significant because um, they're planning to update the skills in 0.9.11, which is still a couple patches away, but this is currently some of the stuff that they're thinking about. Now, do keep in mind that this is all work in progress and everything that I'm talking about today will most likely change because it is still so far away and there's still so many things that have to be adjusted, I would say. But let's take a look at what's changing. So they're adding some new skills and some of the old skills are changed, that's fine. Now each class will have a separate section with unique skills. Okay, so now what they're trying to say is that you have one captain and on the one captain, you can have four skill builds. However, that skill build would only be active while you have the captain trained or specialized for that one ship in that one class. So for example, let's say you've got a destroyer build and when you take that captain, you put on a destroyer, then that destroyer tree becomes active. However, uh, you still have to specialize it for that ship first, aka you have to train the captain for that ship. If you move it to a different destroyer, you're going to have to retrain the captain, but you at least don't have to redo the skills. So that's kind of what I think they're getting on here. Maximum skill point number is now 21. Okay, so this is quite significant because um, looking at the new skills, there's going to be a lot more variability, I think, build-wise. Um, and 21 skill points is going to help you make those new adjustments, shall we say, to your captain builds. Okay, new way to get elite commander experience. So this is you dismissing your unused commander. So of course, those of us who've been collecting a lot of like 10-point commanders, this is great. We can get uh, elite commander experience from that. So that I think is pretty good. And then finally, the amount of experience required to retrain a command to another researchable ship has been reduced by half. So this is also quite uh, good as well, because you don't have to pay as much to retrain a uh, captain. This is good. Okay, it says, if and when the changes come to the live server, everyone will have the opportunity to reset their captain skills for free. Good. So this means a global uh, captain skill reset. Very, very important for those of you who maybe are free to play uh, to use this opportunity. Okay, uh, skills already existing in the game will be adapted to a new system in as comfortable a way as possible, taking all changes into account. Thus, players will not have to necessarily redistribute all their commander skills as they will already be trained for skills most similar to the ones they were trained for in the old system. Okay, most likely you're just going to be resetting anyways when that uh, opportunity comes. Okay, main changes. Commander skill system in its current form has existed for a long time. Yep, okay. Uh, this is the history. Oh yeah, since 0.6.0, good. Since then, new mechanics and many new ships with unique gameplay styles have been added to the, sh the game, okay? Taking into account these and many other factors, we decide to update the skill system. All right, fine. Um, many skills in the game are not suitable for certain classes and individual ships, which greatly limits the variability of builds. In such conditions, there were not as many effective ways to distribute skills as we wanted. These changes will help players not only allocate skills to match their playstyle, but also try new tactics. I mean, there's some truth to that. Um, Yes, you know, sort of they're very selective builds, you know, like, okay, you know, if you're playing BB and you got a secondary build, that's, you know, sort of one build. Um, if you're playing a survivability battleship, it is also sort of one build. There's not a lot of variability. So I, I, I can see that there is going to be some more variability. But again, the min-maxers will eventually min-max everything to the limit. Um, again, everything I talk about today is still hypothetical. So obviously, as you know, the skills eventually get worked out and stuff like that. I would also likely to uh, you know, make adjustments as well. Okay, so in the new systems, each commander will have opportunity to distribute skills for each class separately. So that's what I said earlier. Each in a specialized section, good. Um, it says, for example, you can now assign a captain or a commander to different classes without having to redistribute skills. So right now, you know how like, let's say you have a captain that's skilled for a battleship. If you move it to a carrier, not only do you have to retrain the captain, but you have to reskill it. In the future, you don't have to do that, right? You just have to retrain, okay? Um, there you go, they added more um, sort of different skills and they reshuffled some stuff, so that's fine. Uh, there's a choice between several effective options instead of one ultimate skill. Eh. Okay, that's mostly true, although there's still going to be some skills that are much more useful than others. And it says, 
Have you always wanted to pick just a few more skills? Yes. So they're increasing to 21 points. Okay. So this disparity actually is going to be quite significant, by the way, because um, the, the more captain skills are available in the game, and this is one of the problems, the, the more skill points you have, the greater the power differential, I think, is going to uh, become between the veteran players who have tons of experience captains and players who are just coming in with nothing. So I think this is actually... It's a good thing for us veteran players. We get really excited about this, but there is consequences for this as well towards the lower end incoming players. So this is, um, yeah, this is good for us. Not so good for the new guys. <laughs> um, also get new way to get commander experience, elite commander experience. Again, this sort of favors uh, the veteran players, right? Like I have a ton of unused 10 pointers or whatever. I mean, I'll just, you know, recoup some of that in terms of elite commander experience and probably use it to boost others. I'm not sure how much this would apply to a new player unless they just want to spend money. Like straight up, look at this. 50% experience earned at the cost of 150 experience per one doubloon. I mean, yeah, I guess. Anyways, all right, so let's take a look here. Uh, commanders will still have only specialization, so this is important, right? You still have to retrain it if you change it to a different ship. Uh, only one skill set corresponding to a class of ship is active at any one time. This is self-explanatory. Skills for each class are distributed independently from each other. So yeah, you can do four different skill distributions, right? Okay. Basics of skill distribution will not change. So you still have to pick one from the first row, one from the second row, one from the third row, before you can unlock the fourth row. It's like that. Okay. Uh, cost and number of points for recruited commanders will change. So that if necessary, the player will be able to recruit a commander with a large number of skill points. So basically, you can have a no point captain hired for free. For 900,000 credits, you can hire a six point captain. And for 1,750 doubloons, you can hire a 10-point captain. So they're definitely going in that route now. Um, they're making it really kind of costly, actually. <laughs> but it will, um, again, this seems, to, this seems to disproportionately affect new players or, like, you know, newer players. Because th if they don't have the massive credit reserves or whatnot, then you're incentivized really to spend doubloons to get something like a 10-point captain. Anyways, to redistribute the skills as before, elite commander experience or doubloons will be required, obviously. Okay, each skill section is redistributed separately. Okay, so if you want to redo one section, it's okay. Wow, that could be costly though. Although the one captain will be more, much more universal, I guess, afterwards. The cost of redistribution for a section with a commander of 21 skill points will be 525 doubloons or 500k elite commander experience. Okay, so obviously for 19 pointers, this doesn't change. A commander with no specialization for a specific ship cannot be assigned to it without retraining. Of course, premiums and special ships are not included in that. That's fine. You can go into a, a battle on a ship without a commander. In this case, commander experience will not be credited to the account. Okay, fine. The amount of experience required to re uh, retrain a commander to another researchable ship will be reduced by half. Skills will not work until the commander completes retraining. Okay, so if you don't immediately use, I guess... Uh, doubloons to retrain, uh, at least the amount of experience required to retrain is now halved. Okay, that's pretty good, actually. The cost of commander retraining changes. Since redistribution of commander skills are required much less often, the cost of retraining doubloons will increase from 500 to 750. Okay. Oof. Okay. So that's the preliminary, uh, you know, changes. But here's what they're actually doing skill-wise, and this is the fun part. So, again, remember that this is all work in progress, and my opinions on this stuff will change as the skills get reworked. Um, and again, some of the larger meta pictures I might not see right away. So that might again happen as we see things evolve. But so far, this is my rough sort of, I guess, rough understanding of things. And uh, I have some hypothetical builds as well. And so, you know, here we go. Anyhow. Hey, so we'll, we'll start with CVs first. Um, yay. <laughs> Um, and at skill tier one, so that's the very first row of skills you got to pick. Uh, you've got a couple of options here, actually quite a few. You've got aircraft mechanic, which it, it decreases the aircraft restoration time by 5%. This is incredibly useful. This is like a really, really useful skill because this normally was a much, uh, yeah, this is super useful. Why not have that? I was like 5% is really useful. Um, engine mechanic. So this, uh, increases your engine boost time by 10%. This is a somewhat useful skill. Engine Technician, again, this uh, decreasing the engine uh, consumables, sort of cooldown time by 20%, again, somewhat useful. DCP is not really useful because this affects your ship, and CV's DCPs are really, like, really good anyway, so this is not really useful. Cap Specialist. 
This only apparently affects uh, when the fighter consumable is activated and additional aircraft is launched. And this only affects the carrier's consumable. So the CV, if it puts up a fighter, will launch two fighters instead of one. Not really all that useful because it's not the fighter that you drop. It's the fighter that your CV puts out. And then it says patrol expert is increasing the action radius of patrol fighters. Action radius plus 10%. This is selectively useful. So... Maybe on something like an Enterprise or something like that, where you have a huge patrol radius for your aircraft, maybe that would be useful. But again, I mean, CVs are so concerned about striking and having airplanes ready for that purpose. I would say a aircraft mechanic almost becomes a guaranteed like first row pick, I guess. Second row, things get a little bit more interesting. So you've got Torpedo Bomber Specialist, which decreases arming distance by 10%. That's like really useful. Uh, torpedo arm uh, specialist and increases aerial torpedo speed by 5%. So both of these two combined together are useful. So assuming that let's say you're in a CV with torpedo bombers, these two skills, nice little combination there. Okay. Uh, engine expert increases aircraft carrier squadron speed by like 2.5%. That's somewhat useful. I mean, you can find maybe some situations where you could use that. Uh, and this you have to combo with something else, which I'll show you a little bit later. Repair specialist. So this is improves the uh, effectiveness of the repair consumable. So number of repair consumables plus one. Action time of the repair consumables plus 10%. This can be useful. This can be useful. Um, and this, technically speaking, I mean, if you want, you can always take one of the earlier two skills for like the torpedo bomber specialist, or whatever. You can sacrifice one of those and get this instead as well, just to get the extra heal charge. Expert AA gunner increases the damage by shell explosion. That's not really useful because, again, you don't really want to buff your CV as much, right? You really want to focus on buffing your planes because the majority of CV is about your airplanes. Interceptor. When the patrol fighter consumable is activated, the time before an enemy squadron comes under attack is reduced. Increase the time until the patrol fighters become ready for attack. So I think this has to be combined with a something like patrol expert. And this is really... Um, this almost feels like it's going to be like one of those things where you like anticipate uh, an enemy fighter squad oh sorry not fighter uh, enemy fire <laughs> attack squadron movement there you go words words damn me um and you'd have to anticipate them so well where you like you see their direction you see your ship layout and you say i think this guy's going to try to attack here so you drop a, a like you know the fighter squadron uh in that circle sort of as a way to zone them but the, again it, it, it's not it's not a, such a uh, an easy thing because if you drop them, they don't immediately attack, right? In fact, the the attack timer before they get ready to attack is is increased by fifty percent. So, you know, where normally somebody drops a fighter and the fighters just kind of like dive into the circle, and then they go chasing after stuff. Um, here, I guess the coming into the action zone comes longer, but if they get in and you accidentally like stray into them then their uh, timer in terms of reacting to your planes in the circle increase, like is, is uh, significantly faster. However, action time of the consumables minus 25%. And like the fighter you drop isn't that long anyway. So this is like a really just a selectively useful skill in very select situations. I think you're going to find much more use of, out of the other ones. So yeah, again, they, they still really haven't figured out this kind of skill. Um, just not all that useful. Anyways, okay, moving on. Expert Marksman, so that's a 7.5% buff to your aiming speed for your squadrons. That can be useful. Piercing Armament, increases armor-piercing aircraft armament damage. So that's AP bomb damage plus 5%, AP rocket damage 5%. So for German CV, this would be very useful. For IJ and CV, this will be useful. Um, you've got Pyrotechnist. This is increasing chance of fires by HE and uh, bombs and rockets. So for both US and UK CVs, this will be very useful. Uh, enduring, increasing HP of aircraft by 25 per tier. This is useful the higher up you go. Aircraft engineer, decreases continuous damage taken by aircraft within effective area of AA mounts. So continuous AA DPS is 10% reduction, so that can be useful. And then fighter director. Oh, flight director, sorry. Increases the number of squadron consumables. Oh, yay. <laughs> One extra charge of patrol fighter. That's seriously not very useful. So again, there's, you know, you can see kind of like here, you'll see more and more useful skills for CVs. And then tier four, you've got Navigator Bombardier, which now increases your bomber's speed by 5%. This can be useful. Ruthless, this is the insanely strong skill. Holy crap. Um, if your CV has torpedo bombers, this is an incredibly strong skill. 
So aerial torpedoes partially ignore torpedo protection. <laughs> torpedo protection damage reduction, 15%. That is substantial. Now, at first, you look at the example and it sounds okay. It says, um, you know, for example, if the target's torpedo protection damage is 45%, then with this skill, it's down to 30%. But if you sit there and you really think about it, you realize that like 45% torpedo damage reduction is a huge number already. Not a lot of ships actually have that. So if you were hypothetically, let's just as an example, use like the North Carolina as an example. I mean, with this skill, the North Carolina basically has like nothing for TDS. On top of that, think about cruisers. Like, what's going to happen to a cruiser? You have like so little TDS already. It's like you you meet up this skill, you have nothing. So this, hopefully they'll scale in the future. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I would say this skill is just really strong. If you've got like CVs with torpedo bombers, this is really, really strong. Close quarter specialist. This is secondaries. Okay, this is selective. This is like Graf Zeppelin only or something like that. It's very, very selective. Stealthy, reduces carrier detectability, um, increased aircraft return time. So as soon as I see that, it's like, no, not really useful. Um, senior aircraft engineer, it says damage from the AA explosion. So this is like the flak damage, minus 33%. This could be somewhat useful. Um, and then there's focused. And focused is patrol fighter attacks only aircraft. Uh, aircraft, uh, sorry, only aircraft carrier squadrons can be destroyed only by AA fire. Patrol fighters cannot spot enemy ships. So this is still an unknown because they're still like sort of a action radius and kilometer kind of thing, and they don't really know. So this I'm going to say selectively useful for now because possibly if this gets worked out correctly, where they make like the action radius kind of big and you can use it to zone off an entire area, then something like focused combined with interceptor combined with patrol expert, maybe that could be, you know, a real strong combination of skills, right? Then the CV, instead of being only focused on offense, can also be focused on defensive usage. Anyways, however, for now, this is a hypothetical 21-point CV, and I'm using a Japanese high-tier CV as an example. Say, first skill you pick, aircraft mechanic, 5% restoration, always useful. And then um, you're going to grab either torpedo bomber specialist or torpedo armament specialist, your call, either you want minus 10% arming distance or 5% torpedo speed. That leaves you with 18 points. Then I'm probably going to get something like expert marksman, uh, enduring or enduring your call there. So it's either 7.5% uh, to the aiming speed or plus 25 HP per tier. So one or the other, and then definitely getting piercing armament. Uh, so that's AP bomb damage uh, plus 5%. So that will cost me uh, six points in total. So I've got 12 points left. Then ruthless. Yep. Definitely going to get Ruthless because that'll give me 15% reduction to torpedoes, like like protection, why not? Leaves me with 8 points left. Grab Navigator Bombardier, so there goes another uh, 4 points, so my aircraft are a bit faster, 5% more uh, in terms of speed. And then I can go back and take one of the ones I missed earlier, so from Expert Marksman or Enduring, I'm going to take one or the other now, so get a little bit more HP or a little bit aiming time, so with 1 point left, get engine mechanic, so 10% boost time, hypothetical. Um, so you can already see that there's like some really, really, really strong skills and some of them that are a little bit more selective or, you know, more selectively useful. Okay, battleships. Battleships is going to be interesting. So you've got loader, which is basically the current uh, expert loader skill. 75% would be useful if you have a special skill. 50% is only somewhat useful. Um, pyrotechnist increases chance of fires. I mean, Somewhat useful, especially if you're running like a secondary build. If you're running like, like a survivability build, not so much. Consumable specialist reduces reload time of ships consumables. Um, again, this is mostly for reload time of main battery reload booster, torpedo reload booster, spotting aircraft fighter, defensive AA consumables. Not really useful unless you're like French BBs with the MBRB. Um, also, torpedo reload booster for battleships. <laughs> Uh, uh, Kitakami Yamato coming in the future, Kappa? <laughs> Which just I don't know. All right, anyways. Um, emergency Repair Specialist reduces reload time of DCP Repair Party by 5%. Okay, that's going to be somewhat useful. Increases number of explosions in AA salvo by 1. <laughs> it's literally useless. <laughs> Maintenance Specialist. I mean, unless they change AA again, huh? But other than that, literally useless. Maintenance Specialist. Reduce risk of main bad uh, main turrets, torpedo tubes, steering gears, engine coming incapacitated by 30%. This is like old preventive maintenance. That can be somewhat useful. But like 
on the tier one for battleships there's not a lot i mean yeah like this one here somewhat useful this one here somewhat useful and this one here somewhat useful um yeah so you know we'll see oh and if you're running secondaries then that one can be somewhat useful but other than that yeah the the, the first tier skill is really going to depend on your ships second tier you've got gunner which is basically expert marksman helps your turrets traverse faster that's useful Threshing is basically IFA chief for battleships. <laughs> okay. Consumables expert. Okay. This can be useful on select ships. Um, you know, it, it gives you a longer consumable action time, which again, if you have like a surveillance radar, for example, on a Missouri, that could be really useful. Um, if you've got something like a, you know, if you've got something like a hydroacoustic on a German battleship, this could be useful. Smoke generator. I mean, uh, maybe in the future, if we get like, you know, Italian battleships with their fuel smoke or whatever, that could be useful. But yeah. Select ships here. Argoside, again, if you can utilize this uh, intelligence uh, provided by this, this is basically priority target. It could be very useful. Otherwise, only useful at best. AA gunners, tra uh, sorry, training expert. So this increases your continuous... Uh, DPS in a priority AA sector by 20%. So you upwards of, like, let's say, you know, if you get like 150% now, you'll get like 170%. If you're 135, you'll get like 155 as example. Only on BBs with really, really strong continuous AA, I think this could be useful. Otherwise, no. And vigilance is as useless as ever. So, yeah, a couple of useful skills there, but not much actually. So the battleships are interesting, right? Like the first two you know, tiers, nothing super useful, but battleships, once you get to the next one, this is where things start to get really cool because they get a bunch of useful stuff in the three and four tiers. Here's one, armor piercing. Yeah, so if you can tolerate longer flooding duration, longer fire duration, fire duration, by the way, is quite substantial, 40% increase, but you get 5% AP shell damage. So that's substantial. That's, um, if you can tolerate the negatives, that's that's a lot more damage per salvo. Um, no joke there. All right. If you have a secondary uh, thing, this is uh, basically the same as AFT now, 20% to secondary range. They did mention somewhere along the line that they're talking about a, a potential increase, I think. Oh, did I, I, that, 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 did I see this? Okay, hold on. Let me, I did remember seeing this earlier. Hold on. I think they mentioned that. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me just double check if I mentioned this. I think they were saying how they were trying to... Okay, hold on. You guys gotta give me a second. I gotta, I gotta take a look to see if I can find this. One second. And yeah, I did find it. Actually, I had to, I had to stop the thing because it was starting to get really kind of complicated. But it was actually mentioned up here. There we go. It was in this, uh, this section here, right there. It says, furthermore, we're planning to increase the base secondary arm and firing range for the majority of battleships. Detailed information will be announced at a later date. So, oh, by the way, and manual secondaries uh, also got changed. Uh, it's going to work on both directions. So, like, you know, of course, the better accuracy is still going to be, like, control click on one target, but the secondaries will still fire on the other direction as well. So this is also a nice change for secondary BBs, but that's the one. They want to increase secondary range for the majority of battleships. So more likely future, more, like, sort of secondary battleships as, as, as well. I don't know, but... If that is the case, then of course, something like the secondary armament ballistician could be useful even for non-full secondary battleships, right? Um, anyways, still something we'll think about for later. Adrenaline rush, as always, will be very useful just because, hey, lose HP, gain better reload. Why not? Survivability expert, uh, this is somewhat useful. You know, it's kind of a survivability-oriented skill, somewhat useful. Expert AA gunner, so increase the... Damage by shell explosions and continuous AA damage. It's like not very useful here. Uh, and then steady. Now here, it increases your torpedo protection by 10%. <laughs> so you think something like a Yamato or uh, an Alabama or something like that, you know, with this, you know, their, their torpedo damage reduction goes even higher. Could be very useful. So as you can see, with the three-point skills on the BB line, there's a lot more useful stuff. On the four-point line, still more useful things. So one is Marksman. So Marksman is kind of an interesting skill. It increases your uh, accuracy by reducing your dispersion by 10%. Now, it says, if there are no visible enemies within the ship's base detectability radius. So this is kind of an, a strange concept to think about, but it, it basically says that if you are in a position 
where there is no visible enemy ships within your base circle, okay, then you're going to gain a dispersion buff. So this is, it says a visible ship is a ship you are able to see on the battlefield. It's not important who spotted her and if she's in your direct line of sight or not. So basically if it's like, as long as it's, you know, like you could be behind an island, but if someone else spots something on the other side of the island, but it's within that circle, then you're not getting it, right? So you can only get this if you're positioned in a way where like nobody's within your circle, something like that. It's potentially useful. And I think it's mostly designed for crossfire type battleships for marksmen. Again, you know, something like a Slava, I think, could make use of this uh, kind of a skill, which would actually be kind of insane if you think about Slava getting another 10% reduction to main battery. Oh, dispersion anyways. Okay, so marksman could be an interesting skill depending. Secondary armament expert. Uh, so this is basically manual secondaries. Max dispersion for secondary armament, 35% reduction. Useful for secondary BBs, right? Um, you've also got something called straight A artillerist which is basically a faster secondary reload, but if you're within the range of... Yeah, so if the enemy is detected within the firing range of a secondary gun, so there we go, it increases the main battery reload. So again, it's useful for secondary kind of BB skill. Then there's something called Emergency Repair Expert. This increases the effectiveness of DCP and Repair Party. That's actually quite su substantial, and you get one more uh, consumable charge. That's a very useful skill. And then you've got a Concealment Expert, which is, you know, 10% reduction to detectability. Still very useful, and Fire Prevention Expert still really useful because it cuts down your fires down to uh, 3, right? And decrease your risk of catching fire by 10%. So on a hypothetical, the battleships, you can see the Tier 4 and 3 skills are, like, a lot more useful. Hypothetical 21-point battleship captain could look something like this, okay? This is more of a survivability-type uh, build. So... First things first, you just pick whichever of the one-point skills you want here. Either Loader, Emergency Repair Specialist, or Maintenance Specialist. Your call. I might be personally tempted to go with uh, Loader if I have a 75% reduction on the Captain. So some special Captains with 75% reduction, I might offer that. Otherwise, I might go for Emergency Repair Specialist. Then on my second row, I might take either Argoside or Gunner. So this is either giving me Priority Target or Faster uh, Turret Traverse. Again, only one of those skills I'll take. Now, with the other ones on the three-point line, now, this is where there's a couple more choices, right? Adrenaline Rush is still useful, so I might take that. But that 5% increase to AP Shell Damage, ooh, very tempting, right? Very tempting. So Adrenaline Rush plus Armor Piercing, that could be a thing. I could also go Adrenaline Rush and that Steady skill, which is the 10% reduction to Torpedo Damage. So, again, Armor Piercing, Steady, I think your choice there depends on kind of what you want. But, you know, you take that. And then... For, on a survivability expert one, I might take concealment, fire prevention, and emer emergency repair expert. So this will, you know, consume the rest of my uh, points. You could always have some adjustments. If you're running a secondary build, uh, you could focus more on the secondary skills and then sort of switch them out as it is. There is definitely a little bit more variability to build. And again, that, that one thing earlier about possibly increasing the secondary range of all battleships, oof, keep an eye out for that. Okay, moving on to cruisers. And again, similar thing happens. Uh, cruisers have a lot of interesting skills, especially at like the three point section. Very, very interesting. A three and four point section, I think the cruisers have very interesting skills. Okay, skill tier one. Eh, okay, gunner. Yeah, turret reverse speed, 20%. Can be useful. Torpedo man. Not very useful, but I guess if you have torpedoes, it could be useful. But, you know, it's chances of flooding. Not super useful, right? Consumable specialist, again somewhat useful if you've got like mbrb on the french you know selectively useful loader this is shell switch time selectively useful alarming this is basically uh if somebody shoots at you from more than 4.5 kilometers away you get a little indicator that someone's shooting at you currently similar to incoming fire alert not really useful as a cruiser you always under the assumption that somebody spots you and you get locked on or you know currently then you know somebody's shooting at you hell you just get spotted somebody's shooting at you kind of feeling right a gunner increases the number of A. That's absolutely useless. So forget that. Flak is always the kind of a meh kind of thing. Okay. Pyrotechnist. So pyrotechnist is the increased chance of causing uh, fires with your main guns. And the bonus is only 1%. So somewhat useful. Depends if you really have the points for it. Otherwise, probably something I wouldn't spend too much time worry about taking here. Torpedo Armament Specialist, 5% ship torpedo speed. 
again, not really all that useful unless you really like playing with your torpedoes and your torpedoes have sufficient range to make use of this extra speed. Okay, consumables expert increases action time of consumables. So this could be selectively useful. So again, if you've got a radar or hydro or whatever, or a smoke generator, this could be selectively useful. Cause, you know, extra 10% action time, why not? Spotting aircraft expert. Uh, yeah, that's pretty useless. Um, I mean, reload time is lower. You get an extra couple of consumables and the action time is lower. Just You just get to pop more of them more frequently. That's not very useful. Argus side. Okay, this is basically priority target. Intelligence is always useful. You know, hey, that's useful. And then there is a gunner's training expert increases continuous damage. Again, if you have really, really high A DPS, you might find this useful just because continuous DPS is what brings down airplanes. Um, but realistically speaking, Argus side, I think will be the thing. Um, that or consumables expert if you have it on specific uh, ships. But the three point and four point skills are hella interesting. So you've got Demo Man, <laughs> which increases HE and SAP shell damage by 10%. Whoa. <laughs> That's, it, but, but you know, it does have a con. It does increase your ship detectability by 15%. So there is a con there. But if you are playing, let's say like a long range kite cruiser, or maybe like an island camper, it's 10% additional DPS. Like why not, you know? So very, very strong skill there. Possibly, again, very useful for certain select ships. Torpedo Man, which increases torpedo damage by 15%. Again, selectively useful for ships with torpedoes that may be like rushing or pushing or whatever. Um, thinking a bit about a bit about the Germans here, um, or maybe the Japanese with their sort of kiting away type torpedoes, but um, selectively useful here. Adrenaline Rush, again, still always useful. Faster reload, always, always a good thing. AP Demolition Expert. Oh, this one. Look at this. No cons, no negatives. AP shell damage goes up by 7%. That is some notable damage increase right there. Selectively useful, I still say, because again, not every single cruiser is going to be using AP. But just take, for example, something like Petropavlovsk or Riga or Moskva. You know, this is 7% more damage for their AP. It's no joke. Um, or Talonin even. Jesus, Talon. Think about Talonin. Uh, Des Moines can benefit from that as well, by the way. Anyways, that's a selectively useful but very, very strong skill. Provident increases ship consumable by plus one. This can be a very useful skill because why? More heal, more radar, why not? And then enduring, again, HP for ship tier plus 350, selectively useful. There's only a few ships in the game, cruiser wise, that can benefit from this. Okay. Tier four skills. Now, tier four skills are kind of weird. Okay, so there's straight A artillerist. So again, this is if you have... Um, enemies detected within the firing range of a secondary armament increases the reload speed of main battery guns. Selectively useful because this really only caters to something like Petropavlovsk or whatever, you know, something you get like really close and you're close anyway. So, hey, if somebody gets within secondary range, that gives you better uh, main battery firing uh, reload speed. Sorry, my bad. So that would be selectively useful. Brawler, again, selectively useful, right? It says increase ship parameters if there are more visible enemy ships than ally ships within your ship's base main battery, uh, main caliber firing range. And this will give you 8% to your speed and maximum dispersion of 10%. Selectively useful because it's not always, right? Like, you know, because if you have an overwhelming advantage on your flank, um, then you're not getting this bonus ever. You really have to be putting yourself in a disadvantageous kind of position for this to be useful. And I don't really like these on-off kind of skills, I guess, if that's the way to put them. Like, you know, they're sometimes on, sometimes off, and it's really not so easy to keep track of them. So, yeah, Brawler as a whole, not massively a fan of that one. Anyways, Intelligence Radio Technician, this is basically RPF. So that's selectively useful, depending on what should be playing. Thrashing is IFHE, basically, and again, only some cruisers are going to benefit from that. Concealment Expert, as always, I think will still be very, very useful, just because the game still fundamentally has concealment as one of its core base mechanics. Very, very useful nonetheless. And then, yay, Expert A Gunner, increase your continuous AA damage by 20%. I guess, it's like, like again, mostly useless, unless you really have like a 
super high continuous DPS AA ship and then you combine it with the other one. Still, like I would never recommend doing it just because AA is such an unrewarding thing, but yeah. Anyways, hypothetical Des Moines build. Um, probably start with something like Gunner Loader, so either faster Church Reverse or faster Shell Switch times. You know, there's my one point skill out the window. Uh, two points, uh, maybe I get like Consumables Expert or Argicide, so either um, getting priority target sort of information or I get slightly better radar uh, or hydro time. So again, there you go, there's a two point. And then I'm gonna spend a bulk of my skills over here at the three point uh, like line, which is Adrenaline Rush, AP Demo Expert, maybe even grab Demo Man and Provident. So that will give me 0.2 reload, 0.2%, uh, sorry, uh, reload for 1% HP lost, 7% better AP damage, 10% HE damage, um, you know, I will suffer a little bit more uh, in terms of detectability, but you know, Des Moines likes to play behind islands anyway, so maybe that is worthwhile. Um, one extra consumable charge, then of course I grab Concealment Expert, because I had six points left there. Grab Concealment Expert, that get, drops my detection uh, by 10%, so you know, it's uh, not great. I mean, I'm a little bit less stealthier than I want to be, but you know, if I'm playing behind islands and taking good positions anyways, that extra 10% DPM could be huge. And then with my last two uh, two points remaining, I can get either Argicide or Consumable Expert, whichever one I didn't grab earlier. So that would work as a hypothetical 21-point DM build. But yeah, as a as a whole, the cruiser skill like like here, three and four, some really interesting stuff there. Okay, destroyers. Destroyers are not too much change, actually, in a lot of ways. So in skill tier one, uh, you've got gunner, turret traverse. Not very useful. Torpedo Man, um, you know, increased chances of flooding. Somewhat useful. Consumable Specialist, again, you know, reload time of MBRB, TRB, you know, selectively useful if you're having like a ship with uh, TRB or something like that. Loader, you know, shell switch time, again, not very useful. Maintenance Specialist, now this is the thing that prevents you from uh, losing turrets, torpedo tubes, steering gears, engine, whatever. This is useful. This would be like PM on the current, uh, you know, captain's uh, tree. So this will be the most useful, I think, out of all of them. And then there's like a gunner, which is plus one flak. Again, pretty useless. I'd say, you know, maintenance specialist will probably be the most default sort of one point skill that you're gonna take as a DD. And then you've got, uh, in the two point line, you've got pyrotechnist, which like, you know, increases your uh, fire chance, but it's only 1% now. So it's very, very little, somewhat useful at best. Torpedo Armament Specialist, increase your torpedo speed. Again, somewhat useful. Um, there's a lot more so sort of somewhat useful skills here. Consumables Expert uh, increases action time of your consumables. So that's like smoke screen generator, engine boost by 10%. So, you know, again, selectively useful. AP Demolition Expert increases damage of AP shells by 5%. Again, somewhat useful right here. Um, Argicide Detection Indicator. This was basically like priority target. Shows how many people are aiming at you. And then you've got Propulsive, which is basically like Last Stand. And that is probably the most useful out of this bunch, um, but only by like a smidge. Really, you could just take any of the other ones that you think kind of uh, works for you. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'd still go with Propulsive just because, you know, I don't want to ever be caught in a situation where, um, you know, my rudder and my engines go out and then I can't maneuver or anything like that. That would be a lot worse. So I'd still go with Propulsive for the second row, but... I, don't, I mean, if you really want a chance that there's some other stuff you could do there. Okay, three points on destroyers. Now, this is kind of cool. Um, main battery and AA specialist gives you 5% main battery reload um, time um, and a little bit better continuous AA damage. This could be useful. Kind of functions like the way that BFT functions right now. So if you've got more gun focus, that could be useful. Uh, torpedo armament expertise, again, reloads, re uh, reduces your torpedo tube reload speed by 10%. I can no longer English. <laughs> um, somewhat useful if you're more torpedo focused, uh, torpedo heavy. Um, but, you know, I think the meta, according to this, is I think going to switch a little bit more. Ah, you know what? I might as well change this to actually useful. Let's just, let's, let's just make it even, right? If, you know, guns get a, a buff and that's useful, then torpedo tube is also useful, right? Okay, so there we go. Yeah. Depends on which one you're playing, uh, gun focus or, or torpedo focus. Adrenaline Rush, again, this is useful because it's focus, like works the same way as today, although it's a little bit more costly, one extra point there. Threshing is basically IFHE. Again, useful depending on what uh, destroyer you're playing. Um, Provident increases your consumable by plus one, somewhat useful. And then Enduring increases your ship's HP for every tier by 350, and this is a useful skill for DDs. 
So realistically, you can take a whole bunch of stuff. So for example here, um, I decided to spend nine points, right, for a Kitakaze hypothetical, right, and decided to go with like main battery and a specialist threshing and enduring. See, I took a bunch of skills there because there's a lot of useful skills in the three points for destroyers. Four points. So one, you've got basically AFT again, selectively useful only in some situations. You don't really need it, but can be useful in some select situations. Cautious. This can be useful depending on what you're playing. Uh, it increases your ship speed as long as your ship remains undetected. The reload time of your main battery gun is also increased, so you're not really pew pewing stuff. This is mostly for like torpedo destroyers, like think Shimakaze. Never get spotted, now is faster. <laughs> Find another 8%, watch the hell out. Um, RPF, again, selectively useful if you like to use RPF, that's intelligence radio technician. Fearless, uh, reduces the reload time of main battery guns when your ship is spotted. Ship concealment is increased, selectively useful. This is mostly for like gunboats, like pure gunboats that are going to be shooting anyways. Um, but hey, you know, faster main battery. Concealment expert, always very useful um, for a lot of ships. Again, I guess if you're playing like a gunboat, like a Havarosk or something like that, you can't technically give this up and take something else. Uh, nimble, um, this is an interesting one. It says, so when you get detected and, uh, you know, for the first was a 15 seconds of you getting spotted, the enemy is going to suffer a 20% debuff to their dispersion. So that is no joke. That's actually pretty substantial. That's a pretty useful skill. So on a hypothetical Kitakaze, what I would be running would be like maintenance specialist on one, propulsive on uh, the second row. And then I would get something like I said earlier, main battery and AA specialist. So it gives me like faster uh, reload by 5%. Um, I get a IFHE so I can do extra penetration against stuff and more HP. So an extra 350 HP per tier. Um, would there be anything else in that uh, bunch that I would say maybe hypothetically? Uh, no, not really. I think I'll stick with that. Um, and then with the, uh, like sort of two, four point skills, I opted to take concealment expert. So again, uh, Kitakaze is one of its major strengths is the fact that it's relatively stealthy, right? So on top of that, now I took nimble. So nimble means that if I get spotted and somebody else decides to shoot at me from slightly further away, they're going to suffer a 20% reduction to their dispersion, which means that I might be able to get away with taking less damage. That's really, really useful. It gives destroyers a little bit more tools, especially when, let's say, they get radared or whatever. Um, you know, for the first 15 seconds, people are going to be less accurate shooting at them. I think that's a pretty strong skill there. Um, again, you could always take something else. You know, you're, you're entirely able to, say, take cautious, uh, you know, just being faster by 8%. You know, that, but again, you suffer 10% reduction to your, uh, you know, uh, DPM. So there's a 10% penalty to your main gun. So, you know, it may make it a little bit easier for you to reposition, but that 10% hurts, right? Um, so for me, I guess as a Kitakaze, I would still prefer something like Concealment plus Nimble. Just those two, I think that combination is pretty scary. Um, and then finally, with the last remaining point, I just decided to get something like Torpedo Man or Gunner. That's another one point skill uh, that gives me, whoop, where is it here? Uh, yeah, so it's either um, faster turret traverse or like, you know, increased chance of flooding. So one or the other. So all in all, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to these new skills, um, but I do think some of them definitely needs some work. Um, you know, there are definitely skills where you think, yikes, that might be actually problematic, right? Like like Ruthless on CV, like, you know, that 15% reduction is really painful for some ships. Um, you know, like if you're a Yamato, 15%, it hurts, but it's not the end of the world because you still have TDS. But if you're something like an NC where you have like very little anyways, like that 15% is brutal. Um, I, and, and then there's some of those skills which are just very awkward to use, you know, like, so hopefully there's some adjustments, but all in all, yeah, I mean, there's a lot more variability, I think, that's coming in terms of skill builds, a lot more choices to make, uh, min-maxing will be a little bit more complicated, so I am, yeah, looking forward to this, so, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, sorry, this video's kind of run a little long, but with this many new changes, I mean, you know, it's kind of got to be that way, uh, let me know your comments in the comment section below, um, you know, take care, have yourselves a wonderful day, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.